So in the 1950s, Los Angeles was actually an area where the military did some bioweapon training. So they dumped millions of serratia morescens, which is a bacteria, all over the population of Los Angeles. So September 26, 1950, San Francisco is being sprayed for six days straight by the U.S. Navy. The test was deemed a success because millions of San Franciscans, as well as Los Angeles people, inhaled all these bacterial spores. Now, remember, at this point, it was just a test to see if bioweapons could attack cities of that size and demographic, and they deemed it a success. Now, then the following days, what they found was several people came down with urinary tract infections, and when they looked at their urine, there was a red pigment. Wonder why? Over the next two decades, the U.S. military performed similar bioweapons tests on American populations across the United States until President Nixon nixed it. So why am I sharing this with you? Because so many people have a hard time wrapping their mind around the fact that the U.S. government has patents for wind formation, for weather modification, for climate modification. There's even a 1970s paper that proves the U.S. government, along with the Department of Defense and the Forestry Department, decided how to use forest fires as a weapon. Now, what happened in San Francisco and Los Angeles was called Operation Sea Spray. I wonder if 40 or 50 years from now, when we look back on the California fires, the Maui fires, maybe we'll find out that it was named Operation Forest Fire. But this is not the only thing California is known for. California, with its all-inclusive, everybody's treated fairly, come to California, actually uses a form of slave labor to put out fire. You heard me right. Incarcerated people are trained with as little as three weeks of training to fight fires in California. Now, here's the catch. They make less than $7 a day. And once they get out of prison, guess what? All that training goes to naught because by law, they cannot become part of the fire department for up to 10 years if they have one felony and can never become a firefighter if they have more than one felony. Now, some people have challenged this in court and lost. Watch this. It often uses incarcerated people to fight horrific disasters like this one, and they make as little as $6 a day doing it. Inmate fire crews account for about 30% of California's wildland firefighters. They are four times as likely to sustain physical injury and eight times as likely to suffer from the effects of smoke inhalation than other firefighters. At least four incarcerated workers have died in the line of duty in recent years. They're often deployed with as little as three weeks of training. And once these incarcerated workers are released, it is incredibly difficult for them to start a career in firefighting. People with one felony conviction cannot become EMT certified until 10 years after their release. People with two or more felony convictions are completely banned from EMT certification at all. And that rule was just contested and upheld by a federal judge in 2021. So these are just some fun facts about California with Sam. Like, comment, and subscribe for more videos like this.